All right, well, that was uh, financial analyst Mukhtar Mohammed joining us via Skype uh, from Lagos. We'll take a short breather now, and then when we come back, we'll uh, touch on other issues, particularly in sports. Please stay. All right, thank you for staying. If you're just joining, you're watching Daybreak, reaching you live from the nation's capital in Abuja. Now, we've touched on quite a number of issues, most of them serious issues of national concern. But now we'll just uh, digress just a bit, just to take a look at, you know, updates in the sporting world. And now the UEFA Champions League uh, quarterfinal first leg fixtures went down uh, last night, and uh, we'll be taking the perspectives uh, on, you know, reactions that trailed, you know, that uh, march yesterday. Uh, we have uh, journalist uh, Omodia Ogulegbe, uh, who will be joining us uh, to give us preview uh, of that uh, march yesterday. Hello there. Omodia. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Well, thank you for joining us uh, at this hour. Yesterday, we saw, you know, that Manchester City United uh, match and uh, Atletico Madrid, you know, uh, how it turned out, 1-0. And, uh, well, what are your thoughts, you know, to the outcome of that match? Okay. Um, it was, it was uh, one of the biggest games in the UEFA Champions League uh, last eight as the quarterfinal. And uh, you understand that uh, Pep Guardiola, uh, since he left Barcelona years ago, over 10 years now, he has not been able to win the Champions League. He was with Bayern Munich, he didn't win it, and he's been with uh, Manchester City for years now. He hasn't uh, even gotten uh, the cup yet. He was in the finals uh, last time and uh, was uh, beaten by Chelsea. So it's one trophy that has eluded the Manchester City side and Pep Guardiola knows that he has to pick that trophy if he wants to really, really be one of the uh, biggest, um, you know, coaches. And uh, it went down yesterday. 
And uh, the, the Atletico Madrid side, uh, I, I always like to call them uh, one African side. They like to play very physical, uh, very tight football. And that was exactly what they did yesterday. They played a 3-5-2 formation, you know, not allowing Manchester City to do the usual passing, passing, passing. So they had a fair share of the possession, Manchester City. And uh, you agree with me that uh, Manchester City that scores three, four goals in a match, they were only able to score one goal, um, which is good for uh, Atletico Madrid. We don't know what the return leg will bring, but I think it was a very, very good game for Atletico Madrid last night. Well, um, the Man City goal was on, on their turf. Uh, isn't there yeah. a chance that when they go to Atletico Madrid, Madrid, because it's going to also be on their turf, they're going to do a bit better? Yeah, well, uh, games like this, uh, you really can, the home advantage doesn't really, really work well, uh, especially for a side like Manchester City. Uh, they have mastered the art of possession football. Uh, the possession yesterday was about the 60-40 uh, in, in, in terms of possession. Man City knows how to pass the ball very well. And if Atletico Madrid wants any chance at the semi-final, they will have to come out and not defend the way they did yesterday. They will have to, to, to come out to attack Manchester City. And Manchester City, they triumph with teams who attack because in that uh, uh, position or in that way, you open up a lot of spaces for them to, to do the passing game. So it's a very, very tricky situation if they go to Atletico Madrid. It will now depend on the tactics that Diego Simeone, the Atletico Madrid coach, would deploy that will enable City to play their usual game. But I, I trust um, uh, Simeone not to be too uh, flamboyant going forward, uh, opening up the defense. That game might still end in a one-goal, one-one situation. But it remains to be seen. I still give it to Manchester City. They have what it takes. Uh, no disrespect to Atletico Madrid. But in terms of quality players and style of play, they are, they are above Atletico Madrid a bit. So the, the home advantage, I don't think it will really count for Atletico Madrid this time around. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, uh, there's also, you know, the issue with Real Madrid yesterday in that match. Where does that leave them, you know, Atlet Atletico Madrid uh, yesterday, you know, in that match? Where does that leave them? Well, uh, they are the Spanish champions. They, they, uh, they won the title last season in Spain. You know, they are a very modest side. Um, the, the two biggest clubs in Spain are Real Madrid and Barcelona. Barcelona is just trying to find their foot now. But Atletico Madrid is one side that has kept their coach for years. Diego Simone has been with them for, for, I think, over 10 years now. I think 10 or 11 years now. So... He understands the philosophy of the club. If they don't win it, I don't think it's uh, uh, where they'll have to start crying foul. If they don't win it, go back and see what you can do with the Spanish um, uh, league and then qualify for the next Champions League. For these clubs, the Champions League brings a lot of money because uh, it's very lucrative, brings a lot of money to the club. So if they don't win it, it will be fair on them because the Manchester City side they were paired with one of the best teams in the Champions League. So I don't think there will be an issue with the board if they are knocked out in the quarterfinal. Modia, let's talk about the Liverpool match yesterday. Liverpool won their match against Benfica 3-1. It, it appears that that match, uh, does it put them in a good standing for the semifinals? Of course it does. Of course it does. I mean... Uh, the book is uh, all the uh, odds favored Liverpool yesterday night. I mean, uh, there are sides who have, uh, uh, you know, had a bit of cohesion. Uh, they understand themselves. The coach has been with them for, for five and a half years now, if not more. And um, we expected Liverpool to win against the Benfica side. Benfica just, just happened to be lucky. They were lucky, as far as I'm concerned, against Ajax in the round of 16. The beat Ajax 3-2 on aggregate. So, uh, meeting a tough Liverpool side and conceded three goals in Portugal, next week they'll be at Anfield. And you know, Anfield is a fortress for Liverpool. 
as far as I'm concerned, Liverpool are in the semi-finals already because I do not see um I do not see Benfica coming to Anfield in the UK, in England, to score three goals. Because now, even if they score two goals, it will be 3-3 three, three on aggregates. But Liverpool will still have the edge with away goals, although they've, 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 they've taken that out now. So if it ends that way, they'll go into extra time. But I don't see uh, Benfica scaling through. Liverpool in the semi-finals, as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about today's match, Chelsea versus uh, Real Madrid. Uh, yeah. I want a prediction. Which club is going to win that match? Oh, you, 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 are, you are putting me in a tight corner now. It, it, that, that game, remember last season, Chelsea beat Real Madrid, run up to the finals. They beat them in the semifinals, drew 1-1 in Spain and beat them 2-0 in England. And now they have to play first in England. Uh, for the two sides, I think Chelsea slipped up, uh, they slipped up uh, over the weekend, lost 4-1 to Brentford, and uh, Real Madrid are topping the Spanish La Liga. Now, so it's a big game. I, I, I honestly don't see uh, Chelsea getting a straight win based on their last uh, game. But, you know, uh, they say in the Champions League, domestic form uh, sometimes doesn't count. So I would like to sit on the fence on this one, but... Uh, if I want to put my take on this, I'll, I'll go for a score draw. A score draw. Live up, uh, yeah, but, Madrid uh, there's to... something that I've noticed. You know, Chelsea has a very uncertain future uh, with everything that has happened and is happening with their owner. I mean, nobody even knows the fate of Chelsea as it were. However, they've demonstrated this undaunting spirit. They've been winning matches. And, I mean, this is a, a, a club that is facing a lot of... Uh, you know, it's on that ban, it cannot buy players, it cannot sell, it cannot negotiate and all of that. Why do you think Chelsea is still as strong as it is, though? Well, good, good question. Very, very good question. You know, uh, the last time I was, I, I was here on the show, we talked about this, and uh, I, I, I expected uh, these players to be affected in a way, but, you know, that's why these professional clubs, they have, they have psychologists you know, that talks to these players. And you must also give credit to Thomas Tuchel, the coach of the side. That's how to know a great leader. You must be able to talk your team through a difficult time. You know, maybe you are losing games. You must be able to talk them back to winning uh, matches. If they're having off-field issues, you must be able to, you know, talk them, you know, give them a good uh, uh, um, position to play on the field. So, I, I mean, they, they are professionals. Uh, regardless of what is happening with the club, the uncertainty in the club, the, 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 there's no really confirmation of who is going to take over uh, the club. We just had that there are so many bids. But Chelsea have proven to be a very strong side. They've been going in, in spite of the uh, sanctions uh, on their owner, uh, Roman Abramovich. And uh, that's what they, they, they should do tonight. Pull, up their, pull out their socks and know how to just uh, take this. Just imagine Chelsea get, get into the final of the UEFA Champions League, even if they don't win it, that will be that will count as something very, very remarkable, considering what they are facing at the moment. So they, are, they they've been uh, great professionals all this while, and kudos must must go to the the entire Chelsea board, the players, the chairman, all of them. Kudos must go to them. Okay, I mean I, I'm rooting for Chelsea, but then that's uh, by the way. Um, Please talk to us about the other match for tonight, Villarreal versus uh, Bayern. It, it, it will take, it, it's an uphill task for uh, Villarreal. Um, uh, but they have a very experienced coach in Europe, uh, Una Emery, former uh, Sevilla coach, former PSG and former Arsenal. Remember what he did for Manchester United last time out, he won the, the uh, Europa League. He's one uh, uh, a coach that understands what it takes to play European football. You know, that's the, only, uh, that's the only strong point they have. In terms of quality of players, I think Bayern uh, over, overrides uh, Villarreal. It will take a miracle for Villarreal to beat Bayern tonight because Bayern Munich, they've always been in the last four, last three of the UEFA Champions League. So it will take a miracle. I'll still give it to Bayern Munich. No doubt tonight, Bayern Munich should be winning against Villarreal, except the unexpected happen. Right, uh, Omodia, before you go, however, 
Which two clubs do, do we see playing the finals on May 28th? I, I see an all English final. Uh, I don't know if it will happen, but that's what I see. Uh, it happened last year. Uh, Chelsea and Manchester City. Amongst the eight clubs now, three are from England, Chelsea, Manchester City and Liverpool. And as far as I'm concerned, I feel uh, Liverpool, and Chelsea, uh, Liverpool and Manchester City will put through. I doubt if Chelsea would. Uh, they have a strong opponent in Real Madrid. Real Madrid will not fold their hands and allow Chelsea to win again like they did last year. So it will be difficult for Chelsea to override uh, Liverpool this time. But I see an all-English final. I see Liverpool in the final. They play some great football uh, this season. And uh, maybe Manchester City or Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, let's not forget that uh, uh, they were European 